Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So it has been a while um, since I've been able to get on here and do anything with my plants really. So I wanted to pop in um, while I have a little bit of time and give you a run through of my plants. I was just gonna do um, an update on the new plants that I have, but it's been a while since I did a tour, so I'm not sure which ones I included before and which ones I haven't. So I'm just gonna do a total run through of all the house plants that I currently have. It is, as you can see, already dark outside. Um, I live on the East Coast, so it's about five o'clock and this is what we have. So we're moving into that time of needing more light. I'm contemplating getting grow lights, but I haven't taken the plunge yet. So um, yeah, let me know if you live in an area like me where it's getting darker earlier. Have you gotten any grow lights? If so, which ones do you have? Let me know in the comments down below and also let me know if you've gotten any new plants lately. So if you would like to see all of my new plant babies, please stick around and don't forget to subscribe so you can see all of my new videos. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this around. All right, so the first plant that I'm gonna show you all is right here. I know for sure I didn't show this one last time because I, I didn't have it yet. This, and excuse the pot, I don't have a, um, I don't have a pan to put under there yet. So anyway, this is a rescue plant. It's a bird of paradise. I actually got this in trade for um, a smaller plant that I have that I didn't really care much for. Maybe it was a moonlight phyllo, like a three inch pot, or it could have been a, uh, what's the other one, Prince of Orange. Anyway. Um, I call it a rescue because as you can see, it has some major boo-boos, but this was one of the top, my top plants that I wanted to have, so I was willing to trade for it. The person who I traded, um, you can see it has some sun damage. Her sister actually had kept it outside all summer. She said it was flourishing, and then when she brought it inside, it started to get crunchy, and so she passed it along to her sister, and then um, her sister passed it along to me. I had posted it in a local group. That I was looking to see if anybody had a bird of paradise to trade. So this is how I got this guy. Um, I mean, it's still green, so I take that to mean it's alive. I did repot it, and when I did, I looked at the roots, and they looked fine. I don't know much about the bird of paradise, um, but I'm thinking perhaps it's already dormant. Um, I thought for a minute that there was going to be some new shoots, but there hasn't been. So there's that one. It's pretty tall. I would say I'm five, let me see. I'm five, um, five, six, and it comes up, it comes up to my shoulder. So it's a pretty decent size, and I hope it does something because, like I said, I really wanted this plant. So I'm just going to bring you across this back wall here. This little section set up here, actually on my kitchen table, um, but my daughter's birthday um, was set up in there, so I moved it. Um, it's a little dark in here. Like I said, it's five o'clock. It's darker outside. So hopefully you can see, but there's some Philo Brazil, uh, Cebu and red Maranta. And I just have them in water. So they're doing really well. You can see the Maranta has a new leaf coming across. I have my ZZ plant, which this has grown. This has like over doubled in size. Let me pull it up to the light so you can see. It has like doubled in size since I purchased it. I did purchase this one from Trader Joe's for $10. So I really like that one. This plant here is the Alocasia Ivory Coast. This is also a rescue plant. Um, my husband purchased for me from Aldi's, I mean, I'm sorry, from Lowe's. Uh, put it up a little bit so you can see it. He purchased that for me from Lowe's for $9. It was in a big gallon pot. This is what I was able to rescue. All of these leaves left here, including this one that came in a little wonky, are all new leaves. So all the original leaves that were here when I first got it has since fallen off. And this is all, as you can see, new growth and things like that as well. I hope the lighting is not too bad and you guys can still see, you know, what I'm trying to show you. This plant here pick it up is one of my pride and joy as you can see it is my lucky bamboo I have it in soil topped with rocks 
and it just literally just grows and grows. Um, I have four stocks. I know that as far as the lure goes, that's not a bad number to have. You're going to have five or more. We have four family members. We call this our family plant. And so that's why we have that number. I'm really loving it. People always ask me, you know, what kind of plant it is or if it's just one plant. I purchased these um, in la this past April. Um, and now it's November, so I'll let you know how long I've had it. And they were four individual stalks that I tied together. And um, I got them from Lowe's, and they have just really taken off. So down here, uh, another plant that I am very, very excited about. You come over here so you can see. And that is my red Maranta. As you can see, all these lighter color ones, that's all new growth. And... Um, this plant just does really well. It was a decent size when I purchased it, but it has definitely gotten a lot bigger. I've taken so many propagations from it, and it's still huge. So this one does really well. I think I'll do a separate video on my house care plant, house plant care tips, because I get a lot of questions on Instagram. Um, I'll link my Instagram in the screen somewhere. You can go and check it out. But I get a lot of questions there. I post every day and stories and all of that. And I get a lot of questions about what I do to care for my plants. It's definitely very simple, um, but I would just still want to do a separate video just to show everyone. Uh, but just quickly, you may or may not be able to see down here, I did add a pebble tray underneath because now that we're in the winter months, the heat is on. The heating vent is right here in comparison. That's like, I don't know, less than six feet away, so it's pretty relatively close. So I just wanted to add that as like an extra precaution just to see. So far, so good. Coming down here, this is a pot of golden pothos as well as neon pothos cuttings that I decided to put together. Um, I just wanted to mix some different ones together. So those cuttings are coming along nicely. This right here is a bird's nest fern. I've had also since April. Um, this is one of the plants I've had in that first big batch of plants that I did purchase. It's doing okay. Let me bring it out to the light so you can see what I mean. I feel like I either overwater, I either underwater or end up overwatering. So you can see there's like browning and so I don't know. I'm trying to just stick it out with it, but I don't know. We will see. Coming, continuing across this one. I'm also excited for it. I'm getting closer to my lamp, so it should be easier for you to see. Um, but here's like a little scan across of the ones that I did just show you. So this here is my mass cane, um, also called a corn plant. This one I also bought back in April from Lowe's. I have a video on how I got $100 worth of plants free. I'll link that for you so you can go check it out. But this was in that original batch. It is doing very, very well. Zoom in here, you can see this new branch is forming right here. There's also another bud there. Now this bud was there when I originally purchased it in April and it hasn't done anything, but it is starting to grow now. So I guess that'll be coming in. And then down here, you can also see um, I have more sprouts. That was a surprise to me because I had read somewhere that um, However you get them, like wherever they cut them, um, the stalks, that's how it's going to be. Like it's not going to fill out. So if you want a fuller look to stack, you know, different heights of stalks together to make it fuller. So I was under the impression that it didn't grow new arms as I call them. So I was very shocked to see it when it started to sprout. So that's really cool to see. And then at the bottom, I just added some golden pothos as well. As there's a couple neon pothos in there too. So you can kind of see that. I love how they, they're they trailing up. They look like little arms sticking out the bottom. So that is that one right there. Doing well. And then next to that I have my Monstera Deliciosa. Now this plant I did actually purchase from Trader Joe's for $19. They had it listed as a split leaf philodendron. Which... I have one of those. I knew right away this was a, a Monstera Deliciosa. So this, I would say, is doing well. It has a lot of new leaves. Um, the only thing is, when I first purchased it, there were 
two leaves, two large um, split leaves that had damage. And so I removed those. And then you can see right here, I actually took a propagation, which when I get to my uh, plants in the kitchen, I'll show you how it's doing. So I took that from right there. And the funny thing is uh, that propagation has put out two new leaves since I took it off. They're both split. All the new leaves that come in on this section, this one, all of the smaller ones, this is the newest one. And this is also a newer leaf as well and no splits. So I don't know if it's just not going to put out any splits. I don't know. I thought that as the leaves matured, they would split on their own. But in one of the groups I'm on on Facebook, they said no. Um, they either come in split or not. So I don't know. We'll see. I still really like it, though. And so there's that. I put this pole in here. I think it's that um, Coco Quars, what they call it, is from Lowe's. It was actually in my Golden Pothos pot. And I took it out because um, that outgrew it. And then I ended up doing something different with that plant. But anyhow, I stuck it in here. Not sure that it's really doing too much. The smaller leaves do seem to be gravitating towards it. So, yeah, that's that. <coughs> Excuse me. I kind of like how the stems, like, you know, they stand straight up and stick out. If you see, like, a, a aerial view of it from above, it kind of looks like flying saucers. It used to be over here by the window. But like I said, the heater's right there. So I ended up moving it over here. I say this is about 10 feet or something like that. It still seems to be doing fine. Um, so we will see what happens with that as far as the light. Um, I don't feel like it's pulling, give you this view of it. I don't feel like it's pulling too much. And I haven't really staked it because they're not drooping yet. They're still growing pretty straight on their own. And okay, right there, you can see my Agla Onema. This is the stripe. And let me just zoom in here because it actually flowered for me. It has one, two flowers, which I thought was really cool. They start off opened and they kind of look like the flower on a peace lily. And then they sort of like close up. This is like pretty sticky. I was looking online and it says that once the fruit, you know, the seed part, as they call it, once it gets red and it's ripe, you can pop them out. Um, you clear the flesh off and then you can germinate the seeds. So I'm going to attempt to do that when it's ready. But I really like this one. Um, I have a video of when my husband picked these up for me. Um, yeah, he found them in a grow. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a greenhouse, but it was a place that did have a lot of outdoors as well as indoor plants. And um, it was about four hours from here. So I was really excited about those. They were pretty big when I got them, but they've definitely at least doubled in size since then. And here is my um, Aglonema Silver Bay. And it has also recently flowered. So it has one there and then one coming in. So I'm really excited about that because I didn't even know that they flowered. And I thought it was a new leaf coming in. And I noticed it looked strange. So there's those two. Okay, next here we have my um, philodendron micans. Show you how long it's trailing all the way down to the floor. That vine is about, if I was to stretch it out, it's at least like three feet long. I had some other longer pieces, but I cut them to propagate, which I'll show you. I really love this plant. I actually um, lucked upon it at a local grocery store, which was real exciting. I think this is an eight to 10 inch pot and I got it for $9 and I've propagated it so many times. Um, I've sold cuttings, I've given cuttings away, I've traded cuttings, I have cuttings rooting. So it's still very full and just hanging in there even as much as I have cut it. So I really love this plant. This is definitely one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, it just does really well. And I have it here on top of this nice yellow table. I'm going to do a separate video of all of my thrifted plant accessories slash, you know, um, care items that I have gotten as well. So you can see those. But just a heads up, thrifting is an excellent way to get nice pots 
uh, stands, all that good stuff. So coming across here, this right here, let me move my computer chair, is my Cebu Blue Pothos. As you can see, it's doing very well. I'm trying to train it to trail up this heart-shaped um, this heart shaped planter. It's not a planter. It had a piece that hung from those hooks with a basket that it was originally in. As it started to get longer and um, I stopped cutting the vines to propagate, I wanted to see if I could get it to climb around this, this pretty heart shape. So I put it down on the, um, the shelf it has at the bottom and I'm hoping that it will trail up, but it's doing very well. You can see that leaf right there. Um, there's another leaf in the back. The longest leaf that I measured was seven inches across, so it's definitely doing very well. Another favorite, I ended up picking this up from Walmart for, I want to say, between $13 and $15. And again, it was a nice full plant. I've propagated it in a bunch, and it has grown in size as well. So right over here, this is actually my TV stand and this air plant right here. And um, I just have it in a little, I think this is like a Voda holder. And right here I have a, that's my daughter. She's just waking up right here. This is, I think she told me it was a matchmaker begonia. I just got it because I trade with her for a piece of my string of hearts. I love the polka dots, and I think I thought this was the one with the red back. I think it's called the whitey eye or something. I don't know. She said it was a matchmaker begonia. I still like it, even if it's not the one I thought it was. If you look closely over here, it's putting out a lot of nice new leaves. So that is doing well. Back here, you can see uh, this is a piece of Mikan's, and this bottle um, is a little DIY project that I did with some jute twine. So I have that back there. Uh, some more micans in another container as well. These three right here are cuttings from my, my large snake plant. There was one branch that was leaning, and so I just took it and um, cut it to propagate it. Right here, I have some Mori Mo moss balls. And right here, this little guy is very interesting because I got it for a really good price. This is only a piece of it. The other piece is in the kitchen where I'll show you. And I actually, it had roots. So I put it in soil and it seemed okay. Then it started to show signs of stress. It was yellowing. Um, two of the larger, largest leaves that were on there, I ended up losing. So I decided. All right, guys. Um, if you're new, I have two young kids. So that's what you'll always hear in the background. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, I noticed the signs of stress, so I decided to take it out of the soil. This is actually in water right now, and it seems to have been doing a lot better. There's still a little bit of yellowing. It hasn't progressed, so I'm thinking it's okay. And these are new leaves, and there's another new one right there. So um, for the time being, it's much happier in the water. The roots are only, I would say, probably about like an inch long. They weren't very long roots to begin with. So I'm going to leave it in water for a while and um, see how it does. I have some more micans right here. I actually just cut these, um, a pretty long vine the other day. And so that's why those are there. The This is a um, Marble Queen Pothos cutting that started off with this, the one big leaf sticking out the side and that one and ended up putting that on on the water propagation. So I decided to take it out and put it in some soil. This here is a piece of my Philo Brazil, another piece like you saw over there. It's actually, come in and show you, it's actually still in water. I just set it inside the pot and it's doing really well. It has this huge leaf right there. Eventually, I'm going to plant it up, but um, for right now, I'll just leave it in the water. And over here on the end here, you can see that I have another cutting of Mikan's. And then this guy, I want to show you up close because it is really cool. This is from my Cebu Blue Pothos. And you can see that the stem has actually begun sprouting completely under the water, like leaves, roots, and everything, which I think is so cool. And I just want to see how far it goes. So I'm going to leave this in the water. I didn't even know that was possible. This is really, just really neat. 
and actually it makes me think of something that I wanted to do which was get a um a fish tank and put some plants in there so this is everything that's on my tv stand so let me get my daughter come on mama let's move over here and come over here to this stand right here i'll give you a scan of it so let's start at the bottom over there on the far left we have the world's most pitiful peperomia obtusifolia i think it is um this plant has been through a whole lot i've had it actually a really long time over a year it's put out new leaves as you can see it's dropped all but one i think i was over watering then i was underwatering. the last leaf that ended up dropping was because i let it get too dry then when i watered it um it just didn't bounce back this leaf just stayed so i'm gonna leave it in there for now i know this should be closer to the window for more direct light but as of right now this is just where i have it and here we have the um, um, pothos pearl and jade and this was a rescue plant I actually got from a dollar for a dollar show it to you for the side you can see how much it's grown um, I got this from Lowe's and it is doing very well uh, it has some new growth right here as you can see and it's really vining and branching out so hopefully it'll be trailing very soon and then over here this is another peperomia I got it at the same time as this one it's definitely been over a year. They didn't do anything for the longest time, but they were alive, so I kept them. This was when I had first started to get plants, so I was definitely overwatering. And um, so, yeah, it has a new little leaf in there. There's another piece. I cut off the top, and I had stuck it down in the pot to encourage it to bush out. It wasn't taking well, so it's in the kitchen in some water, and I'll show you that. This one here is my... Um, Alocasia poly, also known as African Shield plant, and it's funny because I definitely call this my FOMO plant because I never liked it, but everybody was getting it, and I didn't want to miss out, so um, I picked it up, and now I actually really like it. This is the most leaves it's had since I've gotten it. Since I've gotten it, it has lost two leaves, so it has not grown a lot at all. I got this over the summer. It hasn't grown a lot. It's more so gotten taller. It hasn't pulled out a lot of new growth. This here was a leaf I was very excited about. I don't know if it's picking up. You can see it has some yellowing. I think I got too excited and started watering this guy a little too much, so I've pulled back. Um, whereas at first, I um, left it really dry, and then somebody had a post saying that if you let it go too dry, it can go dormant. So I started to water it a little more and then it put this leaf out. But if you can see a comparison, it's so much skinnier than the other leaves. Um, it still has that new green. So um, I'm not really sure. Then I noticed the other day some yellow flecks in it. So I was going to chop it off, but I'm just going to leave it and sort of see what happens. And this pot, which I always get a lot of questions about, I actually made myself. And I have a tutorial about it. Um, that you can check out as well. I'll link it in the description. Or you could just search my pot DIYs. So next here we have a Sansevieria cylindrica. I picked this up from Lowe's. Uh, the majority of my plants come from Lowe's. I have a few from Walmart and I have some from a couple local places. But I do like to go to Lowe's because um, I get discounts uh, on certain things. And so I just like to go there. Anyway, so that's that. I took a couple pieces out of there to propagate as well. Now, this guy right here is an interesting little story because um, when I purchased it, I just purchased it for the container. It was marked down to a dollar. This is actually not that container. It has something else in it. Um, and it was all black. If I have a picture, I'll insert it. It was all black. And so when I pulled it out, I saw like a speck of green near the base. It was more like white. And I was like, well, I don't know, maybe it can be saved. I was like, if not, I still like how it looks. It kind of looked like fossilized almost. So I just took it, I put it into this little dish I had, and I sprinkled it with some water, and I just set it up here on the shelf. Flash forward, like a week or two later, I was in here, and 
it something just looked out of place. I'm like, what plant is that? I didn't buy that plant. And I looked and I realized that it was that black curled up plant that I had bought for the container. So this is totally cool. You can see tons of new growth in there. It has never lost any leaves, nothing. It just totally went from all black to this really nice lush green. So that one is very cool. Um, over here, I just have some Spanish moss. Long story short, I bought this online. I wasn't really happy with it, but um, I own it, so I put it there. I wanted some for a while. I thought I had found a good deal, and it did not end up being what I thought it would be. So I have that there. And here is some, this is actually a water propagation inside of there. And this is the Hartley Philo. I got this from a local nursery. Long, another long story short, it didn't fare very well. So I salvaged what I could and put in some water. And it has been thriving since then. You can see new leaves coming out and all of that. So um, I'm going to leave that in the water for a while. Now here, this guy is my money tree, which has seen better days. Um, again, struggling with water in this one. At first, I think I was over watering and then I got into the habit of forgetting about it. And I think it, I pushed it too far the other way because one of the braided stems right here totally dried out and I could just, I just plucked it right off. It came right out. So hopefully I'm, it's turning around. I'm seeing some leaves perking up and stuff like that. I want to stay on top of the watering just to make sure because this was one of the cool plants um, that I got when I first started acquiring. So I want to keep that one in good shape as well. Next over here, give you a little shelf span. And I'm moving closer to show you what I have. So starting at the top, we have, oh, let me stand up. Starting at the top right here, we have my um, mother plant. This is where all the Philo Brazil cuttings come from. It is doing wonderfully. It has nice, super long vines. Um, they're kind of bunched up on top of the shelf, but they're really nice and long and super full. I have this hook up here because I eventually, I wanted to get, train it to trail up the wall, but I have to get some more hooks in order to do that. So for right now, I'm just letting it hang down, but it does really well. It is low fuss, and you can see the new growth coming in, which it always has. And here, I just put this in here. These are um, Cebu blue cuttings that I had in water. I just took them out and put them in the pot. I actually had a single Adansoni leaf in here, but I took it out and put it back in the water because I didn't feel like it was doing anything. And so I just put that in there. We have Mr. Turtle hanging out. This is um, what started off as a single vine of Golden Pothos, and it has just really taken off. As you can see, it trails all the way down here. I've sort of wrapped it around the leg of the shelf. So that's doing really well. Those are pretty simple. Here from left to right, you have the um, Manjula Pothos that I got back over the summer um, and cuttings. They took a really long time, but they're finally taking off and they're in soil. So they're doing really well. This is a Hoya, I thought it was a um, Wayeti, but apparently it may be a different type. I'm not sure. This I got as a cutting as well. You can see the stalk um, right up here. It's doing well. We have the Crimson Princess here, which has just taken off and put out so many leaves. And I love the look of a single vine. So I'm excited about that. This here... It's supposed to be a black peperomia. It's dark right now, so it's probably kind of picking up black. It's more green and maroon type. So I'm not sure what it actually is, but it's a cute little plant. It does pretty well. It does get droopy when it's thirsty, so it can look dramatic and dead if it gets dry. Down here, I have a ponytail palm. Um, this one I separated off. It was originally in there. There were four in there and I separated them. This pot is also another DIY that I did. And yeah, so let's give you a quick span. This is all of the plants as they are in my front room living space. 
and they're all doing very well. I have these in here because this is the largest set of windows in my home and so this is the brightest room and um, that's why I have the majority of the plants here. So coming over here, so my kids' little workspace, I have, this is um, a jumble of different types of snake plants. There's the bird's nest um, sands, the Laurinetti, I think they're called, and then the, um, I don't remember what that one is called, but that one is in there, so I just stuffed them in there. I kind of overstuffed it, but for right now, I kind of like the crowded look, and it's fine, so... Just leave it for now. Now this guy, step back so you can see how big he is. This is another plant that I got in a trade. It is, as you can see, a parlor palm. I traded some Cebu Blue cuttings for it. This is another plant that I really wanted, so I was happy to do the trade. It was big when I got it, bigger than it looked in the picture, so I was super excited. It has since grown even more. You can see right here, this bright green, that's a newer frond. It's a frond right here and here that haven't fully opened yet. So it's just doing really well. I know people um, say they have a hard time keeping these alive inside, but so far so good. I've had it for, um, I've had it for a few months, so I'm pretty happy with it. And again, this is an area, this is just a regular lamp. I'm thinking of putting a grow light bulb in there and seeing if that does something to help. Um, but like I said, I haven't taken the plunge with the grow lights yet, mainly because there's so many options and I'm just not sure, but we'll see. And this guy over here where I got the cuttings from is my very large snake plant. I picked this up from Aldi's, um, a few weeks ago when they had that big plant, that big plant, um, load or whatever you want to call it. And I got this guy for 12 bucks. He's really big. I would say he's at least three feet tall, probably, or just under. So that's that one. And then now I'm going to take you and show you the plants that I have in the kitchen. Okay, so now we are in the kitchen. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so excuse all the pans. I'm getting ready. Anyhow, this is a peace lily, and I actually... Got this in a swap as well. I would consider it a rescue because it was beat up when I got it. It is doing very well now. Um, but I got it in a trade for like a little three inch something or other that I had. So I'm excited about this. I do eventually want, I think it's called a domino. It's the variegated um, piece lily. That is what I do ultimately want. But um, yeah, so we have that. Let's come across here. Now this guy right here, I'm very excited about. My dad actually surprised me with this. He got it, I think he said from a client's um, home. He was either moving or whatever. And um, my dad said he saw it. He had never seen anything like it. So um, he asked the guy if he could have it. He did say when he got it, all of the green, it was no green. It was just the, um, the base and the trunk system. And he said that he actually just took it and sat it outside. It was outside for about three months and then it started to sprout. Now you see the parts that are darker green. Those are the parts that were on there. Mama, let me finish. Close that please. The parts you can see that are the darker green, that was on there when he gave it to me. The lighter green areas that you see, that's all new growth um, since I've had it. So it's doing very well. I've only watered it once since I've had it. He gave it to me on my daughter's birthday, which was November the 9th. And it was pretty dry, I feel like, when he gave it to me. And I only, I waited about, um, I waited a bit to water it. So anyway, I have it in front of this window. I want to say this is a west-facing window. I can't remember. Um, if I remember, I'll put it somewhere up top of the screen. But it does really well right here. You can see all the new sprouts. And even this little guy, all of this is new. So... It is doing well over here. This guy here, which looks like he was cut. He doesn't have anything on him. And um, he goes, because this is pretty tall. Again, I'm five foot, and it comes up to, uh, yeah, it comes up to my shoulder. So at the tallest point. 
So I don't know if this has the potential to re-sprout or what, but um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. It's just really cool looking if you see the base um, and all the different branches. So this is really neat. This is a curly ponytail palm, and I knew what it was right away when he brought it in. So very excited about that. Now over here, this is the shelf near my sink. And of course, I had to put plants here because it just gets a lot of great light in here, I feel. So just going on down, this is more of the Marble Queen cuttings um, that I showed you in the front. I got a very long vine from someone off Instagram. I just paid shipping and she sent me. It's a cutting off of her plant. It was super long. It was at least like three or four foot long. So I cut it up and I have it propagating around. And this is my little struggle plant, I like to say. This is my Strowman Trial Star. I actually noticed that it's putting out a leaf. When I bought it, it had damage. As it grows new leaves like this one here, I'm trimming off the damaged ones that were there when I first got it. So as more come in, I'll get rid of more. But it's really pretty. I like it. I've actually placed stones in the bottom there to create like that marble tray effect. There's a little water down there and it seems to have a liking that. So there's that. Um, across the back, this is a gold dust croton. This is the one and only croton I've been able to keep alive. It's a little struggly right now. Um, it was doing really well. And then it just started dropping leaves. So, I don't know. Crotons, I think, look cool. But they're for sure finicky. That's the propagation of the rest of that uh, peperomia I showed you earlier. And one of my Sansevieria spears. Now, down here, this little ponytail palm was a part of the larger one I showed you previously. And I just separated it out. And I wanted to try one um, in different lighting conditions to see, uh, you know, if it did anything differently. This guy here is my one and only cactus. I'm not sure of the type. If you know, let me know. It has a little sprout coming up there. And this is actually the container when I showed you the, um, the zebra cactus in the front or zebra succulent. That I said was all black. It came in here. And so I bought it just because I wanted this container. And um, yeah. So that's how that came about. This is what is left of my string of hearts. I traded some. I lost some. So this is what's left. Try to zoom in here. And you can see the tiniest of little heart leaves. These are so cute. So it's doing pretty well right here. Uh, so I'm going to leave it here for now. Coming up here. This is the piece that I was talking about that I propagated from my larger Monstera plant. As you can see, it does have a new leaf unfurling and it does have splits. And um, so yeah, that's what I was saying. Like all the new leaves coming in on that other plant, none have come in with splits. So I don't know. And this, I was surprised to get a new leaf off of here. When I cut this, it was this mature leaf and this was like a little bud coming out. And I thought I had cut it wrong because I kind of cut into the node. So I figured it would just be these two leaves, but then I came in here one day and to my surprise, that little guy was coming up. So I'm happy about that. What else do I have in here? This is the rest of that Addisonii um, that I was saying was under some distress. So I put it in a water bottle, uh, in a bottle of water here. Just again, different lighting, different conditions, spread it around, see what it does. This guy back here, I got from Home Depot um this right here it has some dead succulents in it and they had it with a sign that said free and so of course um i took it and i took out what was in there i did have some ivy in there it did not make it very well so right now i have a marble queen pothos and some golden pothos and i think i put a little piece of cebu in there and then there's some spanish moss on the back and so i just really like the way that looks what else do we have here? We have this watermelon peperomia. It's doing pretty well. Um, I sectioned off a bunch of portions. It was really big. And um, I sold a couple pieces of it. I kept this part. I mean, I'm not super in love with it, but I mean, it's okay. So I just moved it in here. Uh, maybe feeling like closer to the window, it would do a little better. And right here in these cute little propagation bottles, this was a long piece of Moana Loa. Um, 
Hindu rope. It is down to its last little pitiful pieces. I stuck it in some water in hopes that that could do something. I really don't know what happened to it. I'm just thinking I let it go too far without water in it. And then it got over watered and um, I just don't know. So try to save that. This little guy right here, so cute. This is a little cutting of mandula pothos that I put over here. These little two neat leaves you see have actually sprouted in the water propagation. And then there are some little mini pieces of string of hearts that are sprouting as well. So I almost always have things propagated around the house. And then this guy right here is actually a begonia. It's the first one I got. My mother actually got it for me um, this past May for Mother's Day. And she had thought it was a mini rose. And I thought the shapes of the leaves look different from roses so i looked it up and i found out it was a begonia it does bloom um it was blooming when i first got it it blooms for a long while it does light pink blooms so it's doing pretty well um so yeah some new leaves coming in and all of that good stuff and then over here this guy right here is um a wandering jew variety i believe it's called spider web something or the other I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's really fuzzy. It has like this white hair over it. I got this in a trade as well, and I just thought it was really cool. It grows really quickly. Um, I just threw a little stake in there because I kind of wanted it to go up. But I really like it. It's cool. I haven't seen anything like it. So that is everything on my little kitchen counter area. So now I'm going to show you the couple of things I have in the bathroom and, and then and in my bedroom. All right, so very quickly, I just have a couple things here in my bathroom. Um, there's a propagation from my red maranta, which does well in here. It has a new leaf here that's already pushing off another new leaf. So it's doing really well. Up here, I have a piece of that heart leaf phyllo that I showed you in the front. It's doing well. This piece is actually in soil. And then here, I just have another single vine, which look at... I think this is so pretty, the way this looks like little arms. But anyway, I have that, and that's from a larger golden pothos that I had that I ended up breaking down. But that's what's in my bathroom right now. All right, now I'm going to finish up in my room because my robe right there on the floor. My kids are getting fussy, and so I'm just going to hurry this along. This is my split leaf philodendron. Um... I think it's a philo, philodendron uh, coelom. It's seen better days. I don't know what's going on with it. I try to plant food in it. That's the only thing different I've done to it. So the only thing I can imagine is that it didn't like it. Like you can see the leaves curly. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This is a mess right here my dog my kid's dog and my house coat so this right here is a golden pothos um yeah i'm really bummed about this plant because it was one of my favorites and i'm just not sure what's going on with it so i may have to cut it back or something i don't know i'll see i did have supports in there but i decided i would rather have it branch out how it did prior so i took him out and i don't know it's looking a little sad but it is what it is um up here this is a golden pothos that i did have on a totem it outgrew it i took it off and i decided i like the way it looked draped so i put it on top of this lamp i have a project in mind for this which i haven't gotten around to doing yet but i'm going to post a video of that as soon as i get to it right now it's up here lastly over here in this little corner which is right by the window is my fiddle leaf fig um this is here is all new growth it's kind of dark you can't really see right there this one has sprouted new growth as well i had supports in here um, but i took it out i'm just really for the plants just growing the way they want so um i went around and took the supports out of certain plants this is actually my husband's nightstand but he doesn't really use it so I put plants. Here we have more heart leaf um, phyllo. And then here 
is what is left of my pilea. Um, basically, you step back, you can see just the sprouts out of the top of it. It had a lot of other arms that were drooping. I took off about six arms, then about three fell off on their own. So this is what's left of this guy. And that is it for the plants that I have in my room. All right, everybody, so that's it for uh, my updated plant tour. I've showed you every single plant that I own right now. Um, you can see most of them are doing well. I'm gonna have to see what's going on with that split leaf in my bedroom. Um, it may need repotting or something, I'm not sure. But yeah, so this is everything I have right now and I uh, hope you enjoyed the tour. Comment down below, let me know if you've been getting any new plants lately. How are your plants doing since the weather has changed? And um, yeah, just let me know how your plant babies are doing. Thank you for watching and I will see you again in my next video. Bye guys.